Come on, 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 come on. <gasps> what do you do? What do you do? Woohoo! <laughs> we did it! We did it! We did it! We did it! Star points! Hello everyone, isn't Michaela here? And I am, I am so proud and I am so happy. It took me freaking months. I was expected to be done with this a very long time ago, but it was much, much harder than I thought. But we did it. We created the world's first DIY smart board for the game of Go. What is Go? That's a great question, random citizen. Go is a strategy game that's in the same vein as chess. It's There's no chance involved, black and white take turns moving, and the goal is to surround points of territory, as well as capture stones. And by the end of the game, whoever has captured the most stones and surrounded the most territory is the winner. It's a super fun game. I've been playing it for, for years. It's honestly one of the most fun games I've ever played. And so my struggle was trying to go over pro games. Game records are so, so confusing. These game records have every move on the board and each move is numbered depending on when it actually happens. You're trying to review a game and you need to like find number, move number 192 in this like whole mess of numbers. It's, it's really, really hard. So I wanted to create a device or a board that could replay the games for me in a way that was fun and kept me engaged and showed me, you know, different strategies and different moves and exactly where to go next. And I succeeded. I thought I would just demo this board for you all, give you a brief summary of how I made it, throw in some live footage of me uh, tackling some of the engineering challenges, uh, and maybe you'll be inspired to play Go yourself uh, or maybe even try building your own board. The night is young. So before we get started, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. Unfortunately, my editor is like gone for the next few weeks. He has, you know, his life to live or something. So the editing won't be the best ever, but it'll still be good enough. The basic idea was we would have a board that has an LED under every single point. The code would then read in a pro game, convert that to an array of numbers, and then would read in the numbers. And so if the first move was on the 3-3 point, it would light up under the 3-3 point. If the next move was like way over here on the 16-16 point, it would light up over there. And so because there's individually addressable LEDs under every single point, it would be easy to play through. And then you can just use a simple control like this scroll wheel to click through. The light lights up based on where you need to go. You play on the place and then you're great. Okay, there, there were three basic challenges to making this board. The, the first was designing all of the 3D printed parts. Every part of this board was custom 3D printed and designed by myself. And that took a really long freaking time. Like probably two weeks by itself, just trying to figure out that the dimensions and the way it looks. But you know, thank God for 3D printers. Once you designed it, I just loaded it in my 3D printer back there and got it going. And within a couple weeks we had all of the parts that we needed. Let me just show you kind of how this looks. It's algorithmically designed. So there's four segments that look exactly like this for ease of use. And each segment is responsible for a quarter of the board and has all of those holes in there that can be seen when you put on the board so the light can shine through. Four of those components fit together in a lattice fashion. And underneath the guts of the board is very, very, very cool a lattice structure underneath the holes to actually separate and shine the light. And that 
probably was the next biggest challenge was figuring out how to actually create individually addressable LEDs. For this project, I ended up taking a trick from my previous weather lights project. Uh, and in case you didn't see that video, I'll link in the description below. I built weather lights, lights, LEDs for my room that can predict the weather. That LED strip was an individually addressable LED strip. And so I was thinking about that, I was like, okay, why don't I just use that technology and string it across this entire grid line for the lights. I would like to point out just a quick aside here. Uh, this entire thing was made for less than $150, which is kind of amazing. I'm pretty proud of how cheap I kept this. And that was kind of the goal to make it reproducible. So fun fact. The second challenge was the electronics and computing system. Okay, I wired everything, and as you can see from this completely clear, not at all chaotic, absolutely elementary diagram, um, uh, the power goes to the board, and the other stuff goes to the, that board. Uh, yeah, uh, this should be fine. It should be fine. It should be fine. So for the electronics, I used a simple Raspberry Pi and a screen, but I had to figure out how to parse through an SGF file, which is the file type that Go Game Records are in. And then I had to figure out how to turn that file into a move list, uh, search through it, and then how to build the entire like architecture of the program. Uh, luckily, Raspberry Pi and Python made this relatively easy. You can actually plug this box straight into the computer and load up a pro game, any number of pro games you want, into the Raspberry Pi directory. As long as it's in the right directory, when you twist the dial, you'll actually see what game you want to play. And then when you click the dial, the game starts. The board changes from white to purple. So the screen is really cool. It has move numbers and also who is actually doing the moving and what coordinates they're moving to, which is really, really nice. And then I had to individually map each LED to what coordinate it's supposed to relate to because unfortunately for me, the LED strips, it's not a one-to-one, -one, it's not perfect. They're not perfectly aligned. The LED lights are a little bit shorter than the distance between the two points. So you print the board, you write the code, you assemble and wire everything. 3D printed a little box for it. And then the last challenge that I had to figure out was how the heck to make the LED hardware actually work for me. How are we going to put these LEDs and string them underneath the board in a way that will make sense and that will make all the LEDs shine to only one light radius. Well, that took, that took a really long time. Uh, my first thing that I tried to do was cut the LEDs into like 19 strips and then solder them together like a snake. Something that I tell myself I need, something that I want, everything I see. So but the soldering literally took hours and it only I only got like three strips done and it was like two hours of soldering. It was a terribly long and awful experience that I never want to do again. On top of that, when I tried to run the lights, they didn't work. I think it's really hard to get a correct solder on those like little copper bits that connect the two wires. So I kind of ended up scrapping that idea. The next thing I tried was having the lights, instead of 19 strips underneath the board, have them facing perpendicular to the board and weaving them like a snake and just having one really, really long strip. See, it's important to not just get discouraged when something goes wrong, because if this works, then it's a way easier method for doing this because I don't have to solder anything. I can just get one strip and snake it through and it's just a matter of 3D printing the right part. So it's like an even better solution than the first thing. Uh, I wish I would have thought of it first, but you know, you, you can't choose in this life. Sometimes you get it right the first try and most of the time you don't. That worked a lot better. I was able to custom 3D print a lot of structure that served both as blinders, so the lights didn't bleed over into the next point, as well as like a little groove for the lights to sort of be threaded. However, for some reason, and I still don't actually know how or why this ended up happening, the lights stopped working. 
I don't understand why. They just didn't carry over to the other strip and they just stopped. And I couldn't figure out how to get them to become unstopped. Please work. We just need all these lights to light up so I can address them. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that's a spirit breaker. So my last and final ditch effort was to use two separate LED strips. We have one in on this side and one in on this side and have them meet in the middle. The only problem with that was that you can't actually operate two LED strips from one Raspberry Pi. Try to look it up, it's, it's actually physically impossible. It's because the drivers, uh, the drivers for the NeoPixel strip, which was the LED strips that I had used, take a lot of computer resources and there's not enough hardware on this board to support two strip drivers. So it seemed like it was literally impossible to finish this project after I invested hours and hours and weeks into trying to build the prototypes. But did that stop me? No. No, it did not, because I had one last trick up my sleeve to actually finish this thing. As I said before, we had to go from one LED strip to two LED strips, uh, separately controlled, one for this half of the board, one for this half of the board. Because we couldn't actually control it in the Raspberry Pi, I thought, hey, instead of having the Raspberry Pi control two strips separately, what if I just used a electrical logic gate to determine which strip was actually powered on. Then the Raspberry Pi just sends the instructions to both strips. Only one strip is powered on and one is powered off. The powered off one, nothing happens, but the powered on one is the one where that instruction actually goes to, to tell it which light to actually light up. And then if it needs to power on the other strip, it flips the logic gate, it turns one strip off and one strip on and sends that same instruction out to both of the strips which means that you actually are able to control two LED strips with one Raspberry Pi using an electrical engineering logic gate that I designed myself, and it was so cool. I'm just gonna give you some footage of me figuring this out because it's a sight. I just created a working light up Go board, and I'm kind of in shock as to how to feel. It's moving, it's responding to the, the thing. Look at it, look at it do its stuff. Oh my God. We made a light up go board, we made a light up go board, we made a light up go board, we made it, we made it, we made it. It turns and lights and changes. We made it, we made it. So because the Raspberry Pi has a pretty decent sized storage and SGF files are so small, you could pretty much fit infinite SGF files and infinite game records in here. You just have to drag them from wherever you've got them uh, and drag them to the board when, by plugging this into the monitor. And once you have that in, I programmed the code to run automatically on startup so you don't have to connect the monitor anymore. Uh, and then you just select a game and you start scrolling. This project was so insanely fun, so insanely complicated. Um, if you want more Go content, if you like Go, I have a secondary Go channel. I'll link that in the video description below. Um, if you're here for my other channel, welcome. Uh, I also do science things too. And yeah, I loved this project. I thought it was amazing. Um, some improvements and things for the future. It would be really cool if I could have this link into some sort of AI. Uh, and so you could actually play an AI by entering in which move you're doing by dialing it in through the scroll wheel. I think that would be really, really, really cool and a great direction to put it. But for now, this is, this is awesome. I'm so, so happy I built this. Uh, and I hope that you had a fun time looking at it. And uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And I hope you have a wonderful evening and week or morning, whatever it is for you. I hope you have a wonderful time. I'm going to keep playing through some of these games. And uh, yeah, see you next time.